Good morning. How are you? It is Monday morning, June 13th. I'm glad to be with you again. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I had a little bit of adventure in mine. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Let me introduce myself first. I am Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor at the Iliopolis and Christian Churches in Iliopolis in Niantic, Illinois. Did I say that right? Did I say pastor of Iliopolis and Niantic? Anyway, I pastor those two churches in Iliopolis and Niantic. Couldn't be happier to serve these communities. I'm the founder and creator of Light Life and Love Ministries. This is for folks who aren't connected with the church but want that spirit life. And I host the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. And this features stories of people who have leaned into the difficult situations and experiences in life and overcome them so that they can inspire the rest of us when we come into those difficult times as well. So this weekend, it was an interesting time. I had one of those difficult situations myself. We had to replace a refrigerator. It wasn't an emergency kind of thing. The compressor didn't quit. The fridge was still working, but the door was broken in a way that couldn't be fixed and required some hacks and tricks to make sure it stayed shut. So we had ordered a new refrigerator and it was scheduled to be delivered on Friday. Long story short, it was damaged. The door wouldn't even open on it. So I went from a door that wouldn't stay shut to a door that wouldn't even open. So it was a long and difficult process, but finally on Saturday, they found another one. They brought it out. It's perfect. It's beautiful. We are very happy with this refrigerator. So there were some some tense moments in there on Friday afternoon, let's just say, but it all worked out for the best. So today, oh, also I have to say, I played music bingo. It was to support a worthy cause here in our community. It's Backpack Project. That's where we raise money for school supplies for kids in our school district. If you have never played music bingo, try it. It is so much fun. It was a blast. So if you get that opportunity, make sure you jump on it. So today I want to talk to you about adversity. Yeah, we don't like to talk about it much and we more so don't like to experience it. But we're going to. There's just no way around that. Life has adversity in it. And I want to talk about how we can tend to the four pillars, as I like to call them, of adversity. These aren't four steps. They don't happen sequentially, but there are four areas that you can tend to that will help see you through these times of adversity. Today, I'm going to talk about the first two. So next week, I'll talk about the last two. But today, I want to talk about having a plan and finding your people. Those are the first two pillars, and those are outward actions. So one, have a plan. What is it that is your difficult situation right now? And this can have so many different forms. It can be uh, learning a new skill at your job. Maybe you have to give a presentation and you don't like speaking in front of people. Maybe it's singing in front of people. Uh, it could be a medical diagnosis that you have. It's going to knock you down a little bit that you're going to have to summon a lot of strength and resources to get through. Maybe you've lost a spouse or someone really important to you and you're going through a time of grief. It, adversity comes in a lot of different ways. Maybe it's financial adversity. There are so many different ways that adversity presents itself. But the first pillar I want to talk about today is making a plan. What is the goal? What's the finish line? What will mark the point that you have come through this period in your life or come through this experience in your life or have overcome this obstacle? Write it down very clearly. What is the end goal? And then once you have that, then list all the things that are going to need to happen in order to get to that goal. And don't stress out over this. Don't worry if you have every little detail. You can do that later, but just get started. Start with some big things you know. If it's learning a new skill, 
let's say public speaking. If you're wanting to overcome your fear of public speaking, uh, what has to happen in that process? If it's overcoming an illness, you know, what steps are going to mark this journey? Do you have to have a surgery or a treatment or so, of some sort? You know, write these things down. And if it's a, a dealing with an issue of grief, then it's really important to be very clear on what's going to mark the overcoming of this. And it's probably not going to be never being sad again. That's probably not feasible because we're always going to have sadness around grief. But mark something that will let you know that you have made it through a process. And that's whatever it is for you. There's no industry standard. Okay, I think I'm back. Sorry if that glitched, but um, be very clear about what your goal is and then the steps in the plan. If it's building a house, it, write down some of those steps that are your responsibility. So just make a list of a plan of action items that you will need to take or oversee taken in order to get to this final place. When you have that in front of you, when you can see that written out, that's really empowering. Even if the list is long, these are items that can be checked off. So knowing where you're headed, knowing the steps to get there, that's a big part of it. That can empower us. And the rest then, easy, right? Just check off those action items. They can be difficult, I get that. But having that list and that clarity is really helpful. So you have a plan. The next pillar, and again, these aren't steps to do in order necessarily, but they are all areas that are helpful to overcoming adversity. The second pillar I wanna talk about today is finding your people. This comes in a variety of different ways. Are there experts that you're going to need in order to accomplish this goal? If you're looking to overcome a fear of speaking or singing, is there a voice coach or a professor or teacher that can help you in this process? If you are learning, if you need to learn a new language, you know, is there an app or is there someone that's going to help you? Who are the experts you need? If it's a medical situation, who are the doctors and nurses or other healthcare professionals that can help you in this process? Find your people. Who will be there to help you specifically accomplish that goal that you made in your action plan? And as you look through the steps that you lined out, what experts or outside people do you need to help you accomplish the things on that list? So what experts are you going to need? And are there any therapists, counselors, pastors, anything of that nature that you're going to need for support? Make sure you write those down as well. If you're not familiar with group coaching programs, there are a lot of those available. And this is a group of people that are working on a very specific problem. And they will meet together online with a coach that will help them through that. So look at that as a possibility as well. Sometimes expertise is best found in other people who are doing the same thing that you're doing. So another aspect of finding your people is identifying the family and the friends who are going to be supportive of your goal. Not all of the people in our lives are going to support us well in everything that we do, but finding those who will be positive and supportive are going to be, that's an important thing to know when you go through this, because these are the people that when times get tough that you can reach out to, and they're going to speak the truth to you, and they're gonna help you to stay focused and moving forward through this, and they're also gonna give you a soft place when it gets difficult. So know the positive people in your life. And then, you know, what groups are available? Are there group co coaching groups? Are there support groups around? Are there other uh, 
places that have people that are trying to do the same thing you're doing that can be helpful? Or is there a hobby that will help you relieve stress in this? And if so, where are those people that are doing this hobby? Find the people that are doing what you're doing that will support you through this process. And then, you know, in other sources, podcasts. There are podcasts for everything out there. Do a Google search and type in podcast for and then type your specific adversity. And you will be surprised, I'm sure, at the number of podcasts that come up on that. These can be great. People share their stories and experiences and best practices. Sometimes they'll have featured shows like things I wish I knew beforehand when doing this particular thing or what to never do in this situation or what to always do in this situation. Podcasts can be really helpful and a great resource, not only for support, but also information. So add podcasts to your list of people. So to recap today, make a plan and find your people. And if you follow me on social media, you'll see more information about each of those in the posts from last week and this week. So look for those and make sure you comment on them. And in this post here, let me know what you're struggling with. I get a, a public post is an always best place to do that. Send me a direct message. And I would love to support you in, get in your journey through adversity. And if you're looking for experts, Maybe I can connect you with someone as well. So comment below, or if you don't want to comment below, I totally get that. Just message me. I'm on Facebook Messenger. And let me know what you are struggling with. And I will pray for you. I'll support you the best way I can. So I hope you have a blessed week this week. Oh, wait, before, before we go. I want to offer you this little bit. I talked about this yesterday in my sermon about prayer, and I want to share it with you. It's a powerful centering prayer. Some people call it meditation, semantics, but this will help you to find some space and peace, whatever your religious background or tradition is. So set a timer for five minutes. The time doesn't matter, but it's helpful to have a place to begin with. So set a timer for five minutes. Find a comfortable place to sit. Doesn't matter if it's in a forest or in a chair or on the floor. Find a comfortable place to sit. Set a timer for five minutes. And then clear your mind and picture a light bulb in your gut, right behind your belly button. And when you breathe in, imagine that light bulb getting bigger and brighter. Breathe in deeply and picture that. And then when you exhale, imagine that light going out from you into the world. Do this for five minutes. If you want to do it for longer, do it for longer. It's helpful to have a starting place. But having that time and that practice is going to serve you well in any day in your life but especially if you're going through something difficult. The breathing will help to calm your soul. It will get oxygen to your body. You're going to feel good when you do this, and you're going to be surprised at how fast five minutes goes by. So that's what I have for you this week. I hope you have a blessed week, and I'll see you here again next Monday. Bye for now.